Hello all, I'm Colette and I'm here today from Witch Ways to talk to you about three uncommon folk magic practices that I don't see shared very often. I see lots of folks, including myself, posting about really common witchcraft practices and that's totally great. But lately I've been running across some things that are a little more uncommon and it really grabbed my interest and so I thought it might interest you as well. So I decided to share them today. And the first one comes from Cornwall and it involves small whisks or tiny brooms, witches' whisks. And obviously there's a lot of information out there about witchcraft and brooms. And I, in fact, have small birch whisks that I use to clear energy away, to give a little freshening, to give a little rebirth and uplift to something. But you can make those kinds of whisks out of any kind of twigs, and each twig will bring a different magical property to your broom, and you can use it in a different way. You can even use sage or rosemary wooden sticks that are left over after you harvest the leaves and take them off and dry them for use in spells or teas or sachets. And once you have your twigs, you just wrap one in very tightly with cord as a handle. The part that was new to me that I really was interested in was that when witches, at least in Cornwall, use two whisks, one is considered the left hand whisk for use in banishing, releasing, and clearing work. And the right hand whisk is used for drawing in and invoking, which I actually hadn't heard of before. Maybe you have. If you have, please put it in the comments and let me know. Maybe other areas do this as well. And some people go so far as to have the left hand whisk be of different kinds of twigs and materials than the right hand whisk. The other piece that I hadn't heard about before was that the right hand invoking whisk can be used to gather energy up and invoke it into something else, like into a person, a spell, a charm, a space, a room, or an object. The way I would probably do this is take my whisk and raise a little energy gathered in as I'm thinking about what I'm gathering in and then brush it lightly over the person or the object that I'm trying to invoke this energy into. The next folk practice that I want to talk about is the practice of taking the herb lucerne, or a dried sprig of it, which is also known more commonly as alfalfa, and putting a little bit of that in a jar and placing it in a dark corner at the very back of your cupboard to ensure that you always have enough food and you never go hungry. So why alfalfa in particular? It's because of its properties. And in folk magic, what people did was they would observe the properties of a plant or an animal and look at the way it affected the environment around them, look at its growth habit, and then harvest from it and put that in their magic in the hopes of replicating some of those qualities and bringing some of their qualities into their own spells and to themselves. So what are the qualities of alfalfa? Alfalfa is an herb of abundance. When you grow it, it pumps nitrogen into the soil so that plants that follow it after you've grown it grow much more lushly, much more abundantly. And practitioners of old and farmers noticed that when livestock of any kind fed on more alfalfa, they grew faster and stronger and put on more weight and were healthier overall. If you can't find it in a store, look in the description and I'll leave a link there to an herb store that I trust. I'm not 
getting any promotion or anything from them. It's just an herb store that I trust locally and you can order some alfalfa online from them. You also might want to learn how to identify it because it grows really commonly in the countryside. And before I talk about my next folk practice, I would like to ask you to give an offering to the algorithm gods so that my channel can thrive. Maybe just hit the like button, maybe the subscribe button, and maybe even the notification bell. And the third one involves a housewarming gift of giving bread and salt. And this comes from the magic of the Ukraine, Russia, Germany, Slavic countries in general, as well as Eastern Jewish traditions, and probably a lot of other places. So what this gift represents is that the idea that bread is sort of the staff of life, the sustenance of life, and by giving bread you are giving the wish that someone always be abundant and they never go hungry and always have enough food. Salt used to be really expensive, so it is given as a gift to represent and give wishes of generosity and wealth. And it was also given with the wish that you never lose the ability to save your life. In Germany, this gift of bread and salt was often given with a whole gift basket of other objects. So those objects might be candles as a wish for happiness, a small broom or a large broom in order to clear the house and sweep it clean of any evil spirits or bad luck that was left over from the previous inhabitants. And it also might include a gift of honey, honey as a way to sweeten your new life. And I just really kind of love that one because lately, I've been using honey a lot to just sweeten any magical work I'm doing and to sweeten my path. Lately, something else that has been really interesting to me is researching and collecting folklore about folk magic traditions that had to do with houses. So I've been thinking about putting together a video in a few weeks as we come into the rainy season here in the Northern Hemisphere that would be about house spirits and folk practices around working with them. So if that's something that you would like to see, just put the word house spirits in the comment section below. So that's all for today, but I hope I see you again soon. And until next time, stay safe and be well.